Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. And in this one, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing of the Yeti X microphone from Blue, along with the installation of the Blue Compass boom arm and the Blue Radius 3 shock mount. And what I'll do is get it all in installed together, show you the process, show you the steps, and give you my first impressions of this whole setup. Now, if you're looking for an in-depth review of the microphone, uh, that will have to come a little bit later once I have a little bit more time with this microphone so I can collect my thoughts. Be sure to look out for that video. Um, that should be up within a few days. Now, let's get started. Again, this is the Yeti X from Blue. Now, Blue microphones don't need any introductions. Yeti microphones, USB microphones, have been around for the better part of a decade. Uh, they're very well known for the sound signature, the sound quality, and its price and ease of use. But the Yeti X, what I've got here, is actually the latest and greatest uh, in the Yeti lineup. Out of the box here, you can see we have a quick start guide that tells you all of the basic functions of how to change the volume, change the gain, and um, the metering and the different options and the different setup modes for this. So we'll take another look at that once we get this thing out of the box. Of course, you have some warranty information and what you have is a very thick padded foam and here you go, this is the microphone. So let me get this thing out. And inside we have the cables. It's interesting to me, the microphone is always packed upside down and you know, once you get it out, this is basically what it looks like. Now you have the dial in the front, which is a smooth dial with LEDs surrounding it that changes the volume, changes the gain, and changes the blending of what you're hearing in the headphones and what uh, you're hearing from the computer uh, computer sounds. Now on the back here, you also have another button that changes the pickup pattern of the microphone. Now, as you can see here, the microphone has four different types of pickup patterns. You've got a cardioid pattern, you've got a stereo pattern, you've got a full surround pattern, and then you also have a interview pattern that picks up only the front and back. So we'll take a look at that once we get this thing powered on. Now, as for the microphone itself, the stand is made out of metal and you've got plastic uh, screws that hold in the microphone and the microphone is also has a metal body. It's got a chrome metal ring along with a metal mesh up top. Now the mesh is uh, hard, so it doesn't have any give to it. Overall, the blackout edition of the Yeti X microphone looks the part. It is probably one of the best looking blue microphones uh, that they have. What is interesting is that this product is the first product that has come out since uh, Logitech has acquired blue microphones. And maybe that Logitech had their hand in some of the industrial design for this microphone. The USB cable that comes with the microphone is a USB type A to micro USB uh, cable that is basically the length of my arm width. Um, that's not a particularly long cable. Now, if you need something longer, you might have to pick something up like this um, from Amazon. This is just a 15 feet cable uh, that, especially if you have a long distance that you need to cover or you need to mount it with a boom arm, this is basically something that you need to pick up. Now, just as a reminder, I'll make sure to link all of the parts and components down in the description below for your convenience. The base of the microphone has a soft touch material on the bottom, and uh, this is to help dampen some of the vibrations coming through the table up into the mic, along with uh, providing protection for whatever surface you're putting this on so that you don't scratch your table. But what I have seen is uh, some people complaining about a vibration still making it through the stand into uh, the microphone. So that's where the blue compass comes into play, which is basically a boom arm that should eliminate all the vibrations and noise. So let's take a look at this. All 
Originally, when I was looking for boom arm mics, I actually looked at the Shure PSA-1, which is another very popular uh, arm. But in the end, I decided to pick this up because of two main things. Uh, the first one is the channel in the middle that you can run your cable through um, where you can hide your cable so that uh, it's less, out of, less visible. And the second is this is a full aluminum arm that seems just a little bit more premium than the sure uh than the road psa one um what you have here is the arm and it's completely you know straight it's not folded up like the psa one and here you have the base for this mount um, this base here the bracket is metal but this seems to be hard plastics it looks to be a relatively thick plastic um, and same material on the bottom of the arm. Now the arm itself, as I said, is made out of aluminum and you do have plastic hinges here. The arm simply clamps to the table and you have the arm that basically just slots right in and it should be ready to go once you get your microphone mounted at the other end. So uh, the last piece we're gonna be taking a look at is the uh, Radius 3 shock mount which I've got right here. So out of the box, we just have the shock mount and a little screw, and basically that's it. So uh, it looks like this will have to screw onto the boom arm and the microphone will have to sit right in the middle here. Uh, what I'll do first is get this microphone off of this base and mount it into this right here. Should be pretty simple. Unscrew the plastic screws and off it comes. Now, one thing interesting that I just noticed is that uh, the base that it comes with has these rubber grommets that try to isolate the microphone from the base. Um, it's a pretty nice touch, but again, we're not gonna be using any of that. So this right here, this is the Radius 3 and the way it works is basically you have the mount the microphone sitting in the middle and it's suspended by these elastic uh, elastic cord or rope or string whatever you want to call this uh, it, it just sits in the middle and it's the only thing connecting it from the outside is the string that's basically woven in there now out of the box on the bottom of this microphone, you can see here, if I can get this thing to focus, that there is a hole, a 5 8 inch hole with a rubber grommet inside. And you can take that out and that's where this screws right in. So I guess this is a dumb question, but I'm not really sure which way this microphone sits in here. Interestingly enough, there's actually no manual for, ah, there, <laughs> Okay, see, I was gonna say there's no manual for the, the shock mount, the radius shock mount, but here you go. It's, uh, it, it's, it's so simple that all you need is one picture for how to install this, this thing. And as you can see, that thing in the middle uh, basically is on the top side. So that's basically it. All right, now let me get all of this out of the way and try to get this thing mounted to the table. All right, so this is the base. The base, again, plastic metal uh, the screw is metal and this part right here is is also metal uh, there is a little squishy rubber stop on the inside so it won't scratch your table but basically all it does is it just sits here and you clamp it in and then you can put in your boom arm mic now initially i wanted to actually drill a hole in the table um, there is a bushing where you can buy from blue that if you drill a hole and you can put in this bushing and then you could put in the boom arm through the hole in the table. But my wife said I wasn't allowed to drill the hole in this table. So, um, and I didn't really want to clamp the microphone on the edge of the table because that kind of gets in the way. I had a, I had a brilliant idea where since this table is actually made up two pieces, you can see here there is a crack right down the middle all the way down the middle. I'm thinking to myself here, if I disassemble this table so I can 
move this aside, I can potentially slide this clamp right into the middle here. So uh, hopefully I can get it to sit basically right here and have that boom arm mic so that I can reposition it a little bit closer so that I don't have to clamp go to the sides. And so this table is very long. This is like a 92 inch table. Um, if I clamp it on the side way over there, I'm not gonna be able to get it all the way over here. So uh, enough talking, I'm gonna have to disassemble this table and try to get this mount right here. And if that didn't make any sense to you, you can take a look and I'm sure it'll make a little bit more sense when I, once I get it done. All right, now everything is assembled and back together again and the arm is mounted in this crevice. Again, this crevice is about four millimeters, maybe five millimeters wide and the metal bar is basically the width of this crevice right here. Now what is interesting is that if you had a wall right here, for example, uh, this entire mount is able to sit on the other side and it's basically you can have it flush up against the wall if you need. So for example, if you were to mount this on the far side of the table and you had a wall on, on, you know, on the far side, you could have it basically right up against the wall, the table right up against the wall and you wouldn't really be protruding much, like I said, four to five millimeters at most. Now, this is probably the most ideal location because once I get this all tuned up and ready to go, you see you'll have the microphone right here um, and I can really position it however I want. Um, and, and you can see here, without it being adjusted, this is very, very tough tension, um, you know, stiff tension, and it just springs right back up. So from here, I've also put my wire in and made sure that <laughs> I got this wire in here before I reassemble the table back together. I'm going to be able to get that hidden away in this line, in this, in this uh, channel right here. Um, this channel basically has these tabs where you just basically lift and you can hide the wire into it. So uh, I'll be doing that right now. Right now. And just like that, uh, basically everything is set up correctly. Um, basically I'm done. Now I do think I probably need to do a little bit more adjustments with the tension. Um, and you can see here in the sticker, it tells you that there is tension adjustments. There's a little screw on the bottom here where you can adjust the tension. I probably have to play around with that a little bit, but overall, um, I think it's all ready to go. What I have noticed already is that this is very easy to move. Um, basically, you know, just with the push, you can swing it out and it's very, very smooth. And even the actuation and the pivoting is very quiet and very easy to lift, very easy to move around. So you know, I could pull it right next to me and you know, do whatever I need. And then uh, when I'm done with it, I could just you know, throw it out of the way and it's, it's, it's out of sight, out of mind. So, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out and um, the way it's mounted. So build quality, excellent, very premium, very nice. Uh, all that's left is to plug it in, get it installed, and maybe I'll just do a little sound test for you and uh, we'll wrap up this video. All right, so I've got everything set up. I've got the G Hub software running, Logitech G Hub software running in the background, and I've also got Audacity recording the mic right now. Now, I haven't done any calibrations or any settings. This is basically straight out of the box. I think it's set to like 48 gain, percent gain. Uh, it's probably a little bit hot. I'm, I'm not too sure. I haven't actually listened to myself, but uh, what you should be hearing right now is directly off of the Audacity recording, and I can, I can switch back and forth between the Rode NTG3 on top of my camera right now, um, and you could compare the differences. And of course, I've got the microphone pointed towards the camera so that you can kind of see uh, what's going on. I've got the LED, green LED lights, you got the yellow, and then I'm sure if I were to peek, it turned red. And you know, this is really nice, uh, nice indicator of basically what kind of game your setting is at right now. Um, and, and considering I'm in the green, green, yellowish range, as you can see, it should be it should be okay for the most part. Um, just just so that you guys can hear, this is basically what uh, mouse click sounds like in the background. 
I can see that the microphone is, you know, visibly picking it up. And then this is what the keyboard would sound like. So I'm sure the microphone picked a little bit of that up as well. But for the most part, uh, you know, this isn't like it's a dynamic mic where it rejects everything in the back. Uh, from what I've done, the limited testing and what, from what I could see, this microphone will pick up basically everything in the room, which is, uh, is, is the intent. You know, it's going to be very sensitive, very clear, very natural sounding mic. So uh, you need to treat your room and make sure that wherever you're recording is basically in an ideal location. Uh, no air conditioning is running in the background or refrigerators or whatever. Like I said, I'll probably upload another video in about a week or so after I've really played around with it and collect all my thoughts together and you know give you a full review of the entire setup and give you my thoughts. Uh, but overall, from what I can see right now, it's really, really nice. Um, the build quality is great and I've been very impressed by what I've seen so far. So again, if this helps your purchasing decisions, you can take a look at the links in the description down below. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out and perhaps consider subscribing if you wanna see the next video. I'll see you in the next one.